My friends, welcome to Lone Wolf Mountain. Woo! It is a nice day, everyone. It really is. Talk about it being nice for a second. The temperature is 61 degrees. Time, three o'clock in the afternoon. With it being so warm, that's going to make the night interesting. And that's because there's a cold front coming our way. Supposedly later on tonight, we may have some thunderstorms. It's gonna rain in the morning. It should be an interesting trip. This is an impromptu trip. I just decided basically to pack the truck, come out here to Lone Wolf Mountain and to do some gear testing. What I have here is the One Tigris Tetra tent. This is the large version that has the integrated tent inner. So well, I figured with the rain coming in, we would get this tent out and waterproof test it. So yeah, why don't we go ahead and set it up. I've already begun testing out the small version of this tent and I like it a lot. That's why I've made it a priority to test out this one too, because I know a lot of people, they're gonna have questions about this. The setup is super simple, teepee tent, the price is good, the size is awesome. This is a big tent. Now check this out everyone. This is one of the coolest features to this tent. I love this. This tent has a full on porch mode. To be able to guide this out and to set up this porch that's going to protect you from at least light rain, it's pretty sweet, it's pretty smart actually. With this tent, you have this awning here, the porch. Now it does offer some protection, but it's not perfect by any means. I mean, check out the design of this. You have two big gaps, one on each side, and it's that area that can get wet when the rain is falling down. So because of that, I'm going to take this tarp and cover up the front of this tent. That way I have a nice dry location to hunker down underneath if I need to. The setup is done and I'm just about to break out in a sweat. It is pretty warm everyone. Much warmer than it should be for this time of year. Woo! All right. As far as the sun goes, we have about an hour and 20 minutes before it goes down. My plan, I guess, is to set up a chair, set up a table, and here in a minute, we'll get the fire going. But the tent, it's all been set up. Everything's ready to go. To go over the gear one more time, the tent is the One Tigris Tetra large size. On the inside, I have my DOD Outdoors mattress, which is incredible, super comfortable. On top of that, I have a Corinthia Defense 4 sleeping bag, super warm very good quality, very fair price. In addition to those components, I have some other items that I'm testing out for this trip. The primary focus is the tent, but I do have some secondary items that I will be testing out.
New pieces of gear that I'm testing out include this chair from DOD Outdoors and also this stove. Check this out, folks. This is the Covia Cupid stove. It runs on butane. And this is vehicle, house, tent safe. You can use this just about anywhere that you want to. I've had a lot of people ask about this stove and that's why I got it in. The Covia Cupid. The price on this is pretty good. I'm excited to test this out. I've been eyeballing this heater for a long time, but recently I've received a ton of requests to review it. So here we go. That's how I go about picking and choosing the gear that I'm going to review. It's from you all. It's your suggestions, your recommendations. That's what I go off of. That's why I'm testing out the One Tigress tent, the DOD chair, and now the Covia stove. Finally, everyone, I'm beginning to cool down. The sun is almost behind the mountains there. I put water on for some coffee. The stove here, that is from Soto. That's a cassette stove. Cassette stoves are very uncommon here in the United States, but they're popular overseas, like in Japan. I love this stove. It is super different. It runs on butane. Butane's very inexpensive. You could buy like 12 cans of butane fuel for like 30 bucks, it's pretty cheap. The price of butane has gone up over the last year or so, but it's not too bad. Anyways, this is definitely a cool stove. It is now coffee time. Cheers, my friends, cheers. Already it's getting cloudy. The sky's in fact getting a little bit dark. I haven't looked at the radar yet. I probably won't. I'll wait till later. You all can see the trailer on the hill. That's what I call the cabin. That is my emergency bailout option for this trip. So what I do here at Lone Wolf Mountain is that I test out gear. So tonight I'm testing out that one Tigris tent. If for some reason it has a failure, it leaks, that's where I'm going to go. This is nice, everyone. The temp is beginning to drop. 
I believe the low tonight is around 39 degrees. Not too bad. I love conditions just like this. I mean, it's chilly enough like on your back, nice and warm here with the fire. It's perfect. My dinner tonight, what is this called? Okay, so this is a new backpacking meal company. It's called Right on Track. Next generation backcountry meals. Next generation, I wonder what on earth that means. They're healthy, lightweight, compact, and a thrill to make. <laughs> a thrill. <laughs> this is a true thrill, my friends, let me tell you that. Cauliflower forest chicken risotto. Takes about six minutes. Made in Montana. Sounds good. We'll see how it is. Let's take a second here and let's go over the weather real quick. It says it is 49 degrees right now. Tonight, showers mainly after 2 a.m. Chance of rain, 100%. Amounts about half an inch. Tomorrow, showers before 11. 100% chance, around three quarters of an inch. All in all, that's a pretty good forecast. That's going to be a good test for this tent. Let's see if this is ready to go. There's a lot of chicken in here, that's for sure. The chicken needs like another two minutes, but... Oh, that's good. I'm not really sure like what next generation backpacking meal means or camping meal or whatever it said. I can tell you though, it was a thrill ride making this. <laughs> That really is good. Since we're having dinner, let's talk about the adventure vehicle that I've been talking about for the last couple of months. And just in case you're not aware of this, a couple of months back, I presented you all with an idea. Something that I wanna do for 2023. I wanted to get in some sort of cheap and expensive vehicle to go explore with. Something that's smaller than the truck. I love the truck, the Tundra, it's amazing. The only thing is, it's huge. I mean, it's a really big vehicle. It makes navigating some roads a little difficult just because of its size. Because of that, I wanted to get something smaller. So I presented you all with three ideas. Motorcycle, street legal, UTV, or a Japanese import Land Cruiser. Out of the three ideas, motorcycle camping was the least popular. That really surprised me. I expected that one to be the most popular, but it was not. Next was the street legal UTV. I really liked that idea. The only thing is, to get one that really can do like highway speeds and whatnot, it's about $30,000. Or at least that's what I saw with my research. The most popular option by far was the Japanese import. 
So over the last couple of months, I've been doing some research, talking to numerous companies, and I have purchased a Land Cruiser, a Japanese Land Cruiser. It is super cool. In fact, it should be here maybe next week, but it could be the week after. So either way, everyone, it will be here soon, and I can't wait. I think you all are going to like it a lot. With the Land Cruiser, as soon as it comes in, I'll film an adventure with you all. I want you all to see what the vehicle is completely stock. That way we can progress over time and maybe change it some. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do to it yet. I have a few ideas. I'm not going to go crazy. It's not going to be a rock crawler. I'm not going to jack it up some ridiculous amount. I will tell you all a few things about it. Little tidbits to tide you over. Oh man. <laughs> Here in a second I will. Whew. It's an 80 series Japanese Land Cruiser. It is right side drive. It has a bed in the back, a stove in the back, a sink in the back, and as far as the colors go, it fits right in with the channel. That's all I'm going to say. folks it is time for bed it's not all that late it's only about 8 30 but i'm out of firewood easy to get firewood at least so might as well hop inside of the tent await the rain let's see what happens before i get inside of this tent i'm going to take this door and let it down and zip it up for the most part then i'll fire up that stove of course, there's plenty of airflow in here. You don't have to worry about anything. That is the Cupid heater, by the way, with the fuel canister inside of it. Pretty small form factor, not all that heavy. We'll see how it does. I have the heater going here. Had it on for about 20 seconds and I'm gonna have to crank it down some. It's pretty hot. Again, I'm not 100% sealed up in this. There's two vents at the top. There's a huge vent that goes along the body here. So there's no worry, there's no concern, nothing like that. I'm going to call it a night, kick back, maybe watch a movie or something and await the rain. I'll bring you all back when it does start raining. Good night for now. Good morning everyone. It's about 6.45 and it has been a rainy night. It's been raining off and on since about 2 o'clock, something like that. I just fired up the heater here and it's nice. It makes quite a difference inside of a tent like this. It's pretty funny folks. Last night I hop inside of the tent, turn the lights off, go to bed. I would say for maybe two or three hours I hear footsteps surrounding me I'm pretty sure it was just deer but there were footsteps in the leaves and the grass just all over the place <laughs> I'm going to get dressed set up the awning here and I'll bring you all back let's see what it looks like outside
Look at the eyes glowing down there. There's our deer. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. As you all can hear, it's raining, it's windy. It's the perfect morning. It's not all that cold. 36 degrees. I want to say thank you all very much for joining me for this trip. These testing ground episodes are a little bit different than my regular videos. And you may not even notice the difference, but I do. For me, it's more about like focusing on the gear. I'm making more observations. And I definitely have made some observations with this trip. So with the little Covia heater, it works well. It puts out some good heat. And it's big enough, really, for like a uh, rooftop tent for a small tent like this. I'll have to do more testing, but I'm not sure if it has enough output or not to warm up like the back of a truck with like a camper shell on it. But I do like it, it's pretty sweet. With the tent here, the larger size, it performs just as good as the smaller one. The only difference is, is of course, you have this inner tent body. It's windy out there, folks. I took some notes. Let me look at those real quick. And then I'll summarize everything real fast. I take a lot of notes on every piece of gear that I test out. So my thoughts with this tent, super easy setup, waterproof, great ventilation. There was some condensation on the inside, that's to be expected, especially with these wet, cold conditions. But I mean, it's not bad at all. We have that big vent, air comes up through that. It's not bad. So plenty of ventilation, tons of space for one person. Um, this is gonna be a great tent for large individuals. The company says this is a two person tent. That's absolutely not true at all. It's a one person, that's it. You can forget about two people. In a jam you can do it, but with these materials, they do sag. So consider that when you're using it. One person, it's gonna sag some. If there's two people in there, someone's gonna be right up against that material they're gonna get wet. The porch is a great idea. I really like this, but I hope that the company continues to develop this. Because of the big gaps, you have to have a tarp over the top of this if you wanna stay dry underneath it. The company could definitely come up with an idea to fix this. Maybe they could sell like adaptive panels just to be zipped in or something, I don't know. The vent on the back, I like that a lot, but there is no way to seal that up. So let's say that you have this tent out it's windy. There's nothing that you could do to seal that up. Wind is going to be blown inside of your tent, that cold air. It would be nice if there was a way to seal that up completely. That way you can prevent all the air going inside of the tent if that's something that you want to do. The morning doesn't officially start until you have this. And let me tell you, this is some black 
dark coffee. The potent stuff. Cheers, everyone. Ooh, Ooh. that is foul. <laughs> but it will wake me up. Uh, let's see, for breakfast here, I'm going really simple. As you all can see, for this trip, I really didn't plan it too well. I just threw everything together, so I have like freeze-dried meals, that's it. Usually I cook for these type of trips, but I really didn't have time to plan for it. So, just everything kind of fell into place so I could come out. So, I have some Nutter Butter Bites, and that, that's like cookies. I'm not ready for that. It's a little early. I guess I'll just have this granola bar, even though that's pretty close to being the same thing. In all truth, I'm not a big breakfast person. I generally like fast in the morning and then eat for lunch and dinner and so on. Continuing to talk about gear here for a second. So we've talked about the tent, we talked about the stove, let's talk about this chair. So the setup is super fast, super easy. This is extremely comfortable. The legs fully adjust so you can lean the chair forward or you can lean it backwards or you can just raise it up if you want to. The cotton canvas fabric does a good job of blocking wind and that's something that you will notice like with your average your typical like nylon or polyester stool or chair you will feel the wind underneath you you'll feel it hitting you you'll feel it coming through that material and that's not the case here even with these strong dusts I haven't felt anything Next, my friends, I'm gonna give some shout outs real quick. Greg, thank you so much for the pour over lattes and the Vietnamese coffee. Robbie, thank you so much for the hats. I cannot wait to try those out. I really appreciate it. David and Patty, thank you so much for the generator. You guys blew my mind. I mean, blew my mind. I could not believe it. Wow. <laughs> that is the last thing that I expected and I feel guilty even taking it. So if I can pay for it, please let me know. But you guys are so generous. Thank you all so much. Yeah, it's a Predator, I don't remember right off, 3,400, 3,500, something like that. Wow, thank you guys. Next, Shelly, thank you so much for making the hat. I really appreciate it. It is incredibly warm. It fits perfectly. You are amazing. Also, I hope your husband's doing well. Please give him my regards. Before wrapping up this adventure, folks, I want to talk about a previous adventure, and I believe it was two adventures back, maybe three. <laughs> I filmed so many of these, I can't keep track. But it was the trip where I was out for like a day hike, and it started raining, I was hiking on that trail that went up to these big rocks, and I had lunch underneath one of those big rocks. With that adventure, I was hiking that trail, and as the rain was really coming down, the trail was beginning to flood, I kept hearing footsteps behind me. I would go look, couldn't find anything. I had lunch, broke everything down, started hiking again, and I was being followed once more. I've received a ton of comments, messages, and emails about this. Most people wanted to know what I thought it was. There were a handful of people who told me what it was, and that was Bigfoot. Do I think it was Bigfoot? No, I do not. What do I think it was? A black bear. I know, that sounds strange, but hear me out. Being that this is black bear country, there's more black bears than you can count. And over the years, I've had countless interactions with them. In fact, I've had situations where I've had these bears follow me before. Actually, there was a trip some time back where Susie and I, we hiked on the AT and took another trail, the Iron Mountain Trail. On that adventure, we actually had a black bear and her cubs tracking us. They were following us through the woods. This happens. Bears are inquisitive creatures. Sometimes they're scared and they run away. Sometimes they're not and they'll follow close. I yelled at those bears in that trip and they took off. That sort of stuff happens all the time. You have to keep in mind, everyone, that we're going into the winter time. So these bears are getting ready to hibernate and they're very aggressive. So I'm hiking around, it's curious, it wants food, maybe it smelled the food that I ate, I don't know. But in the end, more than likely, that's what it was. You never know, it could have been Bigfoot, I could be wrong, 
Comment down below, share your thoughts. What do you think it was? Cheers to you, cheers to Bigfoot, cheers to the bear. Oh yeah. Since we're talking about the people who wrote in about Bigfoot, oftentimes they would bring up an author. His name is David Politis or something, rather. Hopefully I'm saying that right. That is the author of the 411 Missing Books. David Politis, Missing 411. It says here that he is a former police officer who is an investigator, and he has self-published books dedicated to proving the reality of Bigfoot, establishing the missing 411 conspiracy theory. Apparently this has been made into like a TV show maybe, or a miniseries, I'm not entirely sure because I haven't seen it. But you should know, you should be aware that this guy may not be who you think he is. You can look all of this up, but I've been told before that he was discharged from the police force. Even here on the Wikipedia page, it says that he was charged with falsely soliciting for a charity. When I read his very first book, The Missing 411, as you're reading this, you could feel that he's pushing this narrative of all these strange events. Why would someone take their clothes off? Why would they fold them and put them in a pile? It was cold out. That's not what people do. The thing is, that's exactly what people do. There's nothing strange about these situations, these occurrences. You have to keep in mind, folks, the mind's easily affected by stress, by adrenaline, and so on. Take hypothermia for an example. The body is literally freezing, but at the same time, your mind thinks that your body's hot. It is very common for people who are suffering from hypothermia to take their clothes off, to strip off. It's just one of those things, man. I know it sounds strange, but it is what it is. As for David Politis and his books, if you believe them, great. If you don't, great. I'm not trying to talk bad about this guy. I'm simply pointing out that there's quite a bit of information about him. A lot of it disproves his claims and also paints him in a way that you would have to question his credibility. Plain and simple. After this wave comes through, I'm going to pack everything up and head home. My son is in town and he's actually leaving today. He was out last night with his pals. That's one reason why this worked out, so... Yeah, I'm gonna go home, see him before he heads back off to college. When it comes to the Tetra tents, I really like these. These are very, very cool. The only thing that I would change here, like the biggest thing, are the gaps between like the top of this awning and the wall here. If the company could make panels that sew into this, that seal this up so you have full protection, that would be incredible. But as is, this awning really isn't as useful as it should be. You have this much protection, right? I mean, it's just not enough. If the wind is blowing even slightly, you're going to get wet. You have to have more than that. That's why you have to have a tarp in conjunction if you're going to use this in wet conditions. I'm going to shoot an email to the company, provide them with my feedback, and we'll see what they decide to do. Who knows? I have to say that I like this company quite a bit. They think outside of the box when it comes to their designs. Sometimes it's really strange. Sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes it does. I think for the most part, this works. The Tetra tents are my favorite tents from One Tigris. Guys, gals, thank you so much for joining me for this trip, for this testing grounds episode. I really do appreciate it. Again, everyone, the products that I test out are based upon your recommendations, your feedback. So if you have one, drop it in the comments. Shoot me an email. That's all it takes. I will see what I can do. As a reminder, the channel is agenda free. I'm not here to sell products. I'm not doing product plugs or sponsorships or anything like that. 
Everything that you see in these episodes, I'm testing out because I want to. I don't care if you buy these products. That decision is yours to make and yours only. That wraps it up for this one, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. Until next time, be safe, take care, strength and honor.